Welcome back everybody. I wanted to do another video. This will actually be my third one on this uh, Finnish Mosin that got M39. You can look at my older videos on this gun, uh, the unboxing and, and how that turned out and what we had to go through to convince myself to keep the firearm. Um, it is, to reiterate, it's a uh, Westinghouse receiver so it was built in the United States. The receiver, of course, rebarreled, um, restocked. This is a later stock. This has the uh, uh, the finger joints are squared off, indicating it's a later joint, and it has some wear mark where a blank adapter was put on the barrel, and probably used for maybe training purposes. Who knows? It's got quite a history, though. Um, an antique receiver rebuilt how many times who knows but the main reason I'm making this video again or redoing another video on it is because of the bayonet that I've reached recently got for it and there it is rather small we'll zoom in here a little bit um, what I've decided to go with I had an opportunity to buy an original one but these original bayonets are very rare. In fact, the reproductions are not all that common either. But uh, they usually end up costing almost twice what the rifle would cost. And I could not, even though this was the only rifle I have that's missing a bayonet, I couldn't bring myself to do that. But there's a second option, well, actually two options. Uh, one is what I'll call a reproduction bayonet, which this is by GSA, or the Great Southern Arms. The other is to buy what I'd call a fake bayonet. A lot of those were made in India, and they look like it too. They're pretty rough, and the, the stampings are all correct for the most part. Sometimes they're blued, and... Uh, not not very desirable actually because they are fakes basically I, mean, I see people selling them quite often as genuine bayonets well the GSA bayonets have a little story behind them let me go ahead and pull it off the rifle here and I'll bring it up closer and take a look at it you can see it's a pretty tight fit let me see if we can but it's a really good fit You can see it's marked GSA 1999. It has the SKY Civil Guard uh, marking on it, but it's done in a manner that you could never mistake this bayonet. They were built as reproductions, marketed as reproductions. Um, from what I understand, they were built to the same specifications as the originals. Um, however, with the differences to keep them from ever being mistaken from an original. Uh, this is one of the best reproductions you can buy if you have an M39. But these again are getting a little scarce and hard to find too. And these don't come cheap either when you can find them. Sometimes you can find good deals on them. Um, but you're going to end up costing almost as much as the rifle if you bought it back in the day too. Now you can see uh, this, these are serial numbered. I've never seen one go beyond uh, the four digit number so there was obviously less than 9,999 of them made. I don't know the quantity made. Um, just kind of an interesting side note you can see the serial number 0545. I'm going to go back to the rifle here real quick. Swing around. I'm going to zoom in on the serial number of my rifle be right there on the receiver, it's actually the receiver serial number 545 is the first three numbers of it I thought that was kind of an interesting coincidence that I was able to find a 545 bayonet even though it's, it's a reproduction um, I'll bring out the sheath for it also 
it's not in green again to keep it from being mistaken for an original sheath fairly well constructed see it's got a pretty good polish to it man it is sharp I don't know if they actually came that way a few stains on it had some stickers maybe a price tag at some point but again got to remember it's 20 years old itself and was probably only about a $75 bayonet when new and um, they've probably tripled in price since then but a little bit about the bayonet on its history um, and why it's so interesting uh, there was a collector of these firearms and if you're uh, familiar at all with uh, the Mosin Nagants of uh, the Finnish variety um, there was a collector Doug Bowser is his name and he really brought the forefront uh, these rifles and gave a great deal of knowledge on them and he commissioned him and uh, Powers Dunway I believe was uh, his partner's name uh, Powers has long since passed away and uh, their business no longer exists as far as I know but they collected huge numbers of these uh, rifles they commissioned these bayonets um, to be built because they knew the scarcity of the bayonet you see this one functions just beautifully and uh, commissioned by uh, GSA Great Southern Arms as, as I showed you that's the marking on the on the bayonet and out of uh, JS Mississippi I believe is where it was and I'm not sure where if these were built in the United States that I don't know or if they were I've heard that they were actually uh, commissioned by GSA to be built in India the wood I can't even tell you what type of wood that is it looks like wood that's similar on some other knives I have from India some kukaris and whatnot and beyond that it's it's a very nicely done bayonet if it is made in India um, he's still around and his books are still available uh, Doug Bowser and I happen to have a copy of his book which I highly recommend this one's wrapped up in saran wrap uh, rifles of the white death and you can see collectors and shooters guide to finish military rifles 1918-1944 by Doug Bowser this is an excellent reference book to have for someone uh, interested in Finnish Mosin Nagants and I highly recommend this book um, they're getting a, these again are out of production getting a little bit hard to find I keep it wrapped up in its original saran wrap just to protect it when I'm not using it this happens to be signed copy also um, highly recommend this book though lots of good good information on the various finish firearms so I just wanted to present this bayonet and show you that you do have an option that isn't going to break the bank if you want to have a, a complete um, finish M39 of course uh, other bayonets are equally hard to find this is the M27 bayonet is getting hard to find now too um, there are limited numbers of these that can be difficult to find but when you do I suggest buying it I think these are going to appreciate just as much as the originals because of their um, history and provenance they have and being an excellent reproduction that fits marvelously on the firearm
So there you have it. Uh, I would certainly seek these out if you're interested in uh, being a complete, having a complete gun. I'm kind of a completist in that respect. You can see this bayonet is very and very used very little, very tight fit. <laughs> So anyway, thanks for watching, and uh, go find yourself a, a bayonet for your M39. Uh, they're out there. You don't have to spend a fortune. And there's alter alternatives to the to the poorly made India versions. And uh, seek yourself out a GSA bayonet. You'll be surprised how much cheaper they are, and how accurate and well made they are. Well, thanks for coming along. And we'll see you next time. Thanks.